This week's video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community that has thousands of inspiring classes for curious and creative people. There you can explore new skills, develop new interests, and just get lost in creativity. Over the past five years, as we built our homestead from the ground up, we have learned hundreds of new skills that have gotten us to where we are. And although our interests and talents are different than yours, Skillshare has something to offer for everybody. I've always been interested in photography, so the most recent class that I took was called Point Photography. It's a shoot and edit Instagram worthy shots taught by Jessica Kobesi. She teaches the basics of just getting started and then how to shoot photos and how to edit them. If you're uncertain about what's next, creative challenges and productivity classes can be a great way to help you structure your time and set up achievable goals. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. The first thousand people to click the link in our description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership, and after that, it's $10 a month. Now let's go see what's getting started on the ranch this week. Oh, come here. Oh, are you comfortable now? Lost 10 pounds of hair. Oh, man. Trying to find me. His arms and legs are a lot longer when he doesn't have all that hair. My peace of mind. Let it all go. Out the way. Reed and I are headed to, say hi Reed, 
<laughs> to go pick up six more chickens from my dear, dear friend who is currently pregnant and she's not up for taking care of her hens. So I'm gonna take them from her and hopefully give her some eggs in return. Right now we have um, 22 chickens and one rooster. So we'll have 28 and a rooster and we have eggs coming out our ears and we love it. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I see one more right in there. So that's the six new hens. Our favorite rooster, can't get anywhere near them. They won't go in the coop, they sleep out here, right? One big happy family. Cats, <laughs> goats, roosters. But let's, uh, you could thank my dad for my chicken addiction. Is that right? So he, he was a true horseman, had a horse his whole life until he had a little accident. And after he didn't ride horses anymore, he got into chickens. So since I can't have a horse. You just bypass the, just... the whole horse relationship and get right into. Yeah, yeah, just have chickens. That's a lot cheaper, I think. Although, yeah. Although I think my dad ended up giving away all the eggs to the neighbors too. Yeah, we're, like I said, you. we got a hundred <laughs> eggs on the counter. We could probably stand to give a few away too. It's like the Christmas decorations. Except for these ones stink a little worse. <laughs> they don't stink if you don't if wash I, them. If I, uh, if you know, leave them on the counter. I think we should give some away. I so. did today, actually. Took a couple dozen to my friend already. <laughs> Typically, this time of year, we're not able to get to the outside projects like we have been this year. Usually the snow hangs around a little bit longer and typically it's too muddy to do a project like this. But this year the snow has gone and the weather's nice enough that I wanted to get a jump on one of the big projects this summer in replacing the front fence. Last week, after getting the railroad ties picked up, I wanted to jump right into getting the front fence taken down and the new fence reinstalled, knowing that it was gonna be quite a big job. But at the same time, I've wanted to get rid of the chain link for so long now. See how much the scrapyard is going to give us for it. That way I know how much I'm going to pay in six months when I buy it back. <laughs> I recall it's different to cut 
couple hundred bucks on that stuff, <laughs> not $21. You hit the jackpot, huh? We got lunch covered. <laughs> At Taco Bell? Yeah. <laughs> There's a combination of a few things going on here with the fencing. Not only does it need to be useful and durable with the livestock on both sides of the fence, but we want it to look good as well. Over the last few years, as I've thought about how I would do this fencing, I've considered many different ways to do this, and this is what we've come up with. Four foot, no climb, horse fence across the front, railroad ties set at 10 foot on center, and then we will install lodgepole pines horizontally across the front of it. And this should hold up to the abuse that any livestock can throw at it for a long, long time. Five years ago when we bought our land, we started on the fencing first thing. Putting some sort of fencing across the front of the property was something that we had to do. At that time, Cedar would typically bring the kids up on the weekends when I would be working up here and Reed was adamant that he had to get down to the creek and get his hands and feet wet. So by having some sort of a fence to keep him from that creek was something that had to be done. There was so much maple across the front of the property that I tried to take every piece I could and turn it into a fence post. Now, five years later, I can tell you, maple is not good for fencing. Almost every one of the poles that I put in had either broken off at ground level or all I had to do was give a good shake and it would break off at ground level. And somehow it managed to work for that five years. It's not something I would ever do in the future.
Okay, I'm gonna, we gotta dig this down. You guys tell me when we're deep enough. The same as this. I don't know, just kinda eyeball it. That's what I usually do. Look at Willow up in that tree. This bandit just ran out. You see how high she is? I think I brought enough down. Disgusting. Ew! <laughs> oh my goodness. Hit it. Dang it. Uh, where's your socks, child? Somewhere. Somewhere? In his drawer. In your drawer? I guess it means we don't have to wash any socks, apparently. Oh, there's more. 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 You can set that down on there if you want. We want that thing to kind of slowly trickle in there for the next half hour, 45 minutes. Okay, this is a Liberty apple and it's supposed to be a little tart and a little crisp for, so it's for cooking and, or for baking, whatever, and for eating. We're we not, lost the tag on this one. A tag, but it's just a gala. I don't remember the first part though, something gala. Apple gala. Mm -hmm. Which is a common, is like very a, common a, apple. Kind of smaller, Good eating, right? Smaller and good eating, yeah. Okay. That's what I and normally buy at the grocery store. This one is something plum tree. <laughs> it's called Potawatomi plum tree, bro. Potawatomi plum, plum tree. <laughs> and hopefully we get a lot of plums if we didn't get any last year. And hopefully I said that right. This one is the pear, right? This one's the pear tree. Yep. He thought this. If he thought if any of them we were going to have a hard time with, it might be this one. And he just thinks it's going to grow real slow up here at our place. And he said the base is really small for right now. Yeah, they're not. They're, he said maybe six inches a year is all we're going to get out of this. This one's a which? What's the name on that one, Cal? Okay, sweet. This one's supposed to be a really good eating smaller apple. I think that last one, Bandit, get out of there. Thank you. No, that last was the pear. The one before that, I think, is the. Uh, something crisp. It wasn't honey crisp, but it was something else. It started with a K. Yeah, anyway. Karakami. Karakami? <laughs> Karakami. <laughs> Bro, I just did a close up on your snot head. Oh, disgusting. Can you have to water it for a few days? Yeah, we fill it up like this. We'll give it three or four days. Um, it goes down, it sinks down into the roots, and the roots bring it up to the leaves. You can, you can lay the hose down. You can lay the hose down if you want. Honey. Good job, perfect. In those early days, we had to be so frugal and so practical with every penny that crossed our hands. We were not sure how much the house was going to cost to build, but we knew we had to be careful with everything we spent money on. 
I bought all of that chain link from the local scrapyard, and that's exactly where I took it back to. While it wasn't pretty, it served its purpose. And now we're at a point where obviously we want the fence to be functional, but we also want it to look good. So Cedar and I ran down and picked up a bundle of 40 of these 21 foot lodgepole pines. And in the process of doing this, I had another one of these moments that I haven't been able to stop thinking about since. I'm fairly certain that I told a story in the past that I heard some years back. The story involved a man that had been in the police department for many years. He had even been on the SWAT team. Over the many years that he'd been on the SWAT team, he'd had a couple of close friends pass away on the job. After many years on the SWAT team, his wife was very concerned that he might lose his life in the line of duty as well, and she talked him into taking a job at the academy. This man worked at the academy for a few years more and then decided to retire. In the early stages of his retirement, he took an interest in flying remote control airplanes. One afternoon he was out flying his remote controlled airplane and he lost his ability to see the airplane in the afternoon sun and somehow as he tried to recover the airplane, the airplane hit him right square in the chest and killed him. They're, they're smart this time of year. Yeah. Hey, they're around, but the big ones are down on the private land. Yeah. yeah. They're up there. You'll work for them, though. Yeah. Thanks. Now that I've told that story, let me tell you what happened to Cedar and I as we drove down into busy traffic to pick up the load of lodgepole pines that were needed for the fence. We were driving together in my truck. We pulled into the center turning lane to pull into the yard to have those lodgepole pines loaded on my trailer. Where we were sitting, preparing to turn, traffic was coming at us at about 65 miles an hour. As I was looking to my left to try and figure out where I would park, I heard Cedar say, oh my gosh, this guy's going to hit us. I looked up just in time to see somebody that appeared to be on their phone and their vehicle wandered far enough over into our lane that I was certain they were going to go head on with us. At the last second, the person overcorrected managed to get their vehicle back into their lane and the entire time I sat there completely helpless. But I realized that had that person not looked up, 
managed to get their vehicle back in their lane, that there was absolutely nothing I could do in that moment. At a minimum, they would have hit my side of the truck at 65 miles per hour. I pulled into the yard where I got the lodgepole pines loaded. I started talking to the nice old man that loaded the lodgepole pines for me, and I asked him if he saw what just happened. He said he didn't see it, but he said that almost every day there's an accident out in front of his place. Traffic has gotten so bad that it's inevitable. But the thing that I can't stop thinking about is this idea that maybe when your number's up, there's just not a whole lot you're gonna be able to do about it. Out of all the dumb things I've done in my life, the irony is I'll be sitting in traffic minding my own business when I leave this earth. I didn't like that feeling, but the truth is, there's only so much that we can control. I somewhat jokingly told Cedar, she's no longer allowed to ride in my truck with me. I've been thinking about that one all week. That one shook me up a little bit. In a best case scenario, I would have gone up to the high country, I would have found some lodgepole pines that were killed by bark beetles, and I would have cut everything down myself, rather than paying the $15 a piece for each one of these lodgepoles. But I can't even get on a national forest and cut lodgepole pines down until after June. So by sourcing the lodgepole pines, we were able to get ahead of things and get most of the fence finished. The railroad ties range anywhere from seven feet to nine feet long. And once the fence is entirely finished, I'm gonna come back and cut the tops off of the railroad ties. Earlier in the video, Cedar and I went down to a local tree farm that was highly recommended when it comes to fruit trees. There are apple trees around us, so we know apple trees can make it up here, but we deliberately went to that tree farm because their trees are already acclimated to the climate in which we live. Cedar and I decided that planting them down front against the fence will give us a little bit of a buffer from the road and the new apple trees should be protected from any livestock. The orchard on the homestead is a must have. If you've been following along for the long haul, a few years back, we started a whole bunch of apple and peach cuttings in a five gallon bucket from a friend's tree with the intention of planting them up here. We kept those cuttings in the garage in town and they did great for quite some time.
Over that particular summer, as we got busier and busier, those little cuttings got neglected. And the more research I found about those cuttings confirmed that there was a high likelihood that many of them may not even produce. And it's like, what's it like being on the inside? Look at that, they're, they're liking that pine. So for that reason, again, we went to the tree farm and picked up fruit trees that we know are not only going to produce, but they're gonna make it through the weather that we have. It's exciting that we are where we are with some of the bigger projects around the property. With all the projects that I'm considering and all the ideas that I have, it's exciting to be doing some of these projects like the front fence at this point in our journey. There's part of me that felt like I was never gonna get all the projects finished but there's also part of me that wants the place to look good. That chain link fence with the maple posts did not look good. I found some 12 inch twisted spikes that I'm using to lag the lodge pole pines to the railroad ties. These spikes have a twist in them so they should not come out. To me, the fence goes perfectly with everything else we're doing around here, and it was a much needed improvement. So far, the goats haven't gotten out either. That's always good. This next week, we're gonna get the front fence finished. Once the fence is completely finished, I'm gonna spend some time up at the little cabin. Because lumber is so expensive right now, I think I've decided that I'm gonna break down about 30 pallets that I've been saving for just the right project and see if I can't get the inside of the tiny cabin finished off with that pallet lumber. Originally, I wanted to do a tongue and groove on the inside of the little cabin, but I can see it's going to be an expensive summer around lumber. So anywhere I can save some money, plus repurpose or recycle some old pallets into something new, I'm totally good with it. If I do it right, it should look pretty cool. Cedar and I are actively talking about what we're going to do around the garden this year. Whether or not we're going to put up another temporary greenhouse on the side of the house and make the best of the garden boxes that we already have in place. or whether we're gonna focus the energy in building a new greenhouse up on the hill. But I really wanted to get the solar panels moved before I did anything up there 
So we're still going back and forth on what to do. The front end steering parts have shown up for my crew cab one ton, which I want to get installed. And then once the rims show up for it, that thing will be ready to go to work as well. There's always a million things that I want to do when the snow melts. I'm having to one by one go through these ideas, determine what's important and what must be done, while still making time for some of the funner, smaller projects as well. The weather is now good enough that we can start on the new goat barn slash chicken coop slash generator room slash hay storage room. So we've got to make some decisions on this, but I'm a little bit concerned about building materials and costs associated with it. But I also know that the window to work outside is limited. So if we're going to do it, we got to get on it. I know that neither one of us want to go through another winter under the current circumstances, using the current setup that we have with the chickens and the goats. There's still lots and lots of fencing that needs to be done up on the hill to cut up the individual pastures so we can try to control where the goats get their food from. So like I said earlier, a million projects I'm thinking about trying to decide which ones I'm going to get to.
so you can learn to be kind. Whoa. So you can learn to be kind Oh, what a start Inside out and upside down No stress, I'ma clean up this mess La, like Alice Hand me scissors Then ring out the heavy artillery Oh, Justice is my middle name I'm Alice 